the 357 Magnum and the 44 Mag. Two massive revolver cartridges that Dave and I are going to talk about right now. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to talk about the big fellers, the oh, 44 yeah. Magnum and the 357 Magnum. A lot of people just hear the word Magnum and figure big old revolver round, and they're not always wrong. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dave. These are some powerful rounds, and if you like grabbing powerful rounds for your self-defense handgun, make sure you click on the link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon for your next ammo order here at ammo.com. But, you know, like you talked about, Dave, these are some powerful rounds, and anything with Magnum tagged out at the bend, like, like 300 Winchester Magnum, uh, you know, 458 Winchester Magnum, take your pick. Anything with Magnum stacked at the end, it, it really packs a punch and it packs a punch on your hand too yeah i think you can't talk about these without bringing up first and foremost elmer keith the legendary oh, yeah. hand loading enthusiast who gave birth to both of these things you know i gotta give it to elmer keith i often refer to him as the father of the modern magnum and he loved his recoil and powerful handguns that's for sure but uh, if i remember correctly i think he made the 357 mostly for law enforcement initially to be able to punch through early body armor which is basically just sheet metal or car doors that were used by bootleggers at the time uh yeah. so, you know you got the whole elliot ness uh you know thing going on with the with the bootleggers and things like that and that was kind of where the 357 came around and then the 44 i mean that's that's just a beast to say the least yeah basically car doors became a big problem during the bootlegging days yep. and uh you know, even John Dillinger himself, like the 38 Super, which itself was uh, a car door annihilator. So it's interesting how car doors kind of uh, advanced ammunition technology. But you know, it's even like today. Gotta... It's like today with uh, car glass. That's that's the big thing is talking about you know penetration through uh, you know vehicle glass. And this is back in the day, you know, when car doors were made out of steel and not uh, you know polymer like they are today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, auto glass is, is like the the toughest barrier for, for mm -hmm. law enforcement bullets to conquer. Uh, it's amazing how much stronger it is than steel. It can uh, pretty easily deflect a standard pressure 9mm bullet. But, uh, man, a 357 or a 44, that's going to punch through with some power. And they, this, that is one thing that these rounds are known for is they're just raw kinetic energy, that power pushing that bullet through as hard as it possibly can. Yeah. And we should mention, too, uh, revolvers. Just by nature of the revolver's design, it's able to pack a lot more punch into a littler package. And, you know, you see that a lot with your hunting cartridges, which is kind of what we're talking about here with the 357 and the 44. And you don't get that with a semi-auto because we've well, got a spring you have to deal with and yeah. a lot of moving parts. And heavy recoiling rounds, like maybe even like a 500 Smith and, Smith and Wesson Magnum, man, that's just going to do a number on a semi-auto, whereas with the revolver, it can handle it. But I think really what these rounds excel at is hunting in, like you mentioned, a lever action carbine or something like that. In a rifle format, a lot of that recoil that you have to deal with in you know, a revolver or a handgun is really mitigated with that shoulder stock allows you to really control that round a lot better and you're going to milk a lot more ballistic performance out of it with that longer barrel yeah and to be sure relative to other rifle rounds the 44 mag itself is, is pretty anemic oh yeah compared to something like a 30-06 or you know a 375 h and h mag is something along those lines yeah the 44 is not the end-all be-all of rifle cartridges but it does a great job it's kind of almost like an intermediate rifle cartridge that does the job it works really nice but it has that lower recoil impulse especially in a rifle that uh, makes it a lot easier to handle and you can carry your lighter firearm. These rounds are of a special interest to survivalists who would rather have only one type of ammunition that they can use both for hunting and personal protection because you got your 357 Magnum revolver, you got your Henley Reaver action chambered for 357 
it's just a convenient one-two combo. Nowadays, you know, with our modern revolver rounds and, you know, like the 357 and the 44 mag, really nice utilitarian application that you can use it for both. And that's something that makes it, you know, real appealing to, you know, those who maybe are prepping for long-term survival or things like that. Having two guns and one ammo makes stockpiling a whole lot easier. Uh, Chris, I'm going to finally put this on your lap now. Take a look at them charts and tell me just how much more power we're talking. It's pretty impressive. Your typical like 125 grain 357 mag load is probably running somewhere in the high fives to low six, you know, hundred foot pounds of energy per shot. You look at a 44 and you're shooting a bullet that's almost twice the weight, somewhere in like the 180 to 200 plus grains. And we're getting close to like the eight, nine, even 1,000 foot pounds energy. So there's a big difference between a 357 and a 44. 357, a little bit on the light side for deer. It can be done. Uh, there's no doubt about that. There's plenty of space in that 357 cartridge if you hand load. There's definitely a lot of flexibility in both of these cases to kind of work with. I mean, both of these rounds were developed back before powder technology had progressed to mm -hmm. a certain degree. Of course, there's one police officer who's fairly famous for carrying his 44 Magnum, and that's none other than Dirty Harry. I thought it was Frank Durbin. Ah, well, you know, there's that one too. But I think Dirty Harry is really what made the 44 Magnum really take off, in my opinion. Uh, Elmer Keith did not conceive the 44 Mag as a law enforcement or self-defense cartridge. To him, it was all about anchor and whitetail. To that end, a lot of people are going to find the 44 Mag way too, too much for, for home defense. And that's something I think we should talk about with both of these rounds is their propensity for overpenetration. Now, I say with modern hollow points, especially with the 357, that would be my pick. If I'm going to have a revolver as my home defense weapon, I'm going with the 357 Magnum uh, with some of those nice modern hollow points that will really expand and slow down that penetration. 44 Mag, that thing is a freight train. Uh, you know, on steroids to say the least, and that is going to penetrate a lot. And more than likely, even with a center mass hit, probably going to overpenetrate through the bad guy. And that causes a lot of problems. There's definitely the hunting rounds for 44 mag, and of course there's the, the self-defense. And if I'm going to take a 44 as a self-defense, I'm probably going to go with the 44 special as opposed to the Magnum variety because I want it toned down a little bit. I don't want it overpenetrating as much, and I want that lower recoil so I can get those faster follow-up shots. But my pick between 357 and 44 for home defense or self defense is going to be the 357. Yeah, you touched on something important there, and it's uh, it's recoil. Mm -hmm. it doesn't just make shooting uncomfortable. The more recoil the round has, the the higher up your barrel is going to flip after each shot. You're going to have to restore your aim. Theoretically, the threat is standing five yards away. You fire once, you're not ready for it, your handgun goes straight up, it's going to give them a pretty big window of opportunity to retaliate, and they're going to be pretty dead set on retaliating once you just fired a 44 mag at them. And, you know, that's something that kind of comes up as well as sealed carry and self-defense is you're kind of limited to six rounds, so you're going to have to be accurate with that thing if you're going to use it for self-defense. The neat thing about these revolvers is that either can fire two different types of ammunition. If you got a 357 Magnum, you can fire 38 Special. If you got a 44 Magnum, you can fire 44 Special. But here's the rub: 44 Special is becoming an increasingly rare animal. So if you get a 357 Mag, you're, you're going to have more options ultimately. And that's really critical when you want to go out to the range, you want to practice, or even you just want to find self-defense ammo. Sometimes it can be hard with certain calibers and cartridges, and the 44 Magnum is one of those. 38 Special is becoming really popular, uh, and especially the Plus P variety, which is kind of like this hybrid between the 357 Mag and the 38 Special. It's got a little bit more powder charge to it, a little higher pressure, and uh, a lot of people really like their 38 Plus P as opposed to firing the full power 357 loads. One thing you got to take care with, though is if you prefer a snub nose 38 special for self-defense, yep. plus P round might not give you as great an advantage as you're banking on. One thing I did want to touch on, you're talking about the reverse compatibility between these two rounds, is that you physically can't fire, at least in newer firearms, you cannot fire a 357 
out of a revolver chambered for 38 special or 38 plus p because the case size is slightly different they made that 357 just the harassed bit longer to make sure that you couldn't have a really bad time at the range if you fired a 357 round out of something that's only braided for 38 special well dave let's go ahead and wrap this up here what's your choice which one are you going to recommend well chris if you want to go uh hunting for hog or deer to 44 mag rules to that end you could still do it with the 357 magnum but if you're just looking for a strict self-defense round then you got to go 357 all the way and the neat thing is if you want that lighter recoil you can you can go down to a 38 special you can have your cheaper range loads i'd much rather pay for 38 special than 357 magnum at the end of the day yeah and uh the 44 magnum is just so so powerful it's so deafening it's recoil is so stout yeah i have to agree with you on that dave i think all around if i had to just pick one it's going to be the 357 the lighter recoil uh you know the effectiveness uh in a lever action although not as powerful as the 44 it's enough if you're at close enough ranges if you're in thick brush like we have here in the midwest or you know maybe up in the in new england in the northeast in the main area or even in parts of canada where you don't have those super long range shots that you're going to be taking 357 can get the job done on bambi like we like to say that being said 44 is going to be the the better choice if you can have both if you want a hunting rifle that's a carbine that you could even carry as you know maybe even a little bit of bare metal medicine uh you want to get that 44 magnum revolver then you know that's a great option as well but overall 357 is going to be my pick for these two and if you need ammo make sure you click that link down in the description hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you out on the range 